Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Nightfall from Red Raven Games. Nightfall is a 1-6 to six player skirmish game and cooperative and story-based experience. There's a lot going on in this game. It's really doing a lot of things, and we'll, we'll go through them all one, at one at a time, but I would say the main mode is a head-to-head -head mode in which 1-6 to six players, and ideally teams, and there's ways to do it, like, you know, not even teams, there's ways to handle it, but let's just for the sake of this conversation say you could be playing it as a 1-1, one one, a 2-2, versus two, a 3-3, three versus three, as you go head-to-head -head controlling the various knights and demons in this game, utilizing their powers, being mindful of trying to uh, protect the Elders from, from not dying ideally, depending on which side you are, and then ultimately trying to get your points towards the end faster than the other team. That's the general idea. One player plays as the knights, one player plays as the demons. The knights get a point at the end of every round and every time they kill a demon, and the demons get a point, well, they get demons get two points every single time they kill uh, one of these elders, and they get one point every time they kill a knight, but no end of round points. Whoever gets their track within the round first ultimately wins the game. That's the core head to head experience. There's also a cooperative mode, and we'll We'll get into how things play, but there's also a cooperative mode, and a cooperative mode is going to involve a player or players playing as the knights against the demons, with the demons being controlled by this uh, this deck over here that's going to give the demons the ways they operate, the, the the things they're going to do, extrapolating kind of, you know, hey, move around, deal damage, use your magical ability, things like that as you go through the game. The cooperative deck is going to involve you turning over one card face up, one card face down, and then combining those cards to be able to get what it is the characters are doing, the demons are doing on their turn. And the last Lastly, there's a story mode as well, a full campaign mode in which players are going to be going through, well, you're going to have this sheet over here, you're going to start off and you're going to start exploring around the board, uh, looking at the various numbers in different regions, there's tiny little numbers, you can't see it that well over here, let me see if I can point this out to you, you can see the small little numbers over here, you're going to go to various regions and then walk around, interact with the locations, reading into this book over here, flipping through the uh, back over here and just going through the various story texts until eventually you go through the final showdown at the church, taking down the final demons, but going through various fights and encounters and choices along the way as you manage your resources. It's a slightly, slightly different system in terms of it's no longer going to be a point-based system where you try to get to the end, but rather it's a survival-based system. You have to manage your knights. You only have a limited knights in the game, and as your knights slowly die, you will run out of knights. So you have to try to manage that situation without running out of knights while ultimately going through the adventure. And the demons, the demons will keep coming back, unfortunately. Those are the three main ways to play through this game. You have head versus head, you have solo and cooperative, and then you have campaign, which is within the solo and cooperative framework with some differences for the game. To that end, as far as the actual gameplay though, the gameplay like I said already, in general, in a head-to-head -head or, or solo versus cooperative, you're trying to get points by trying to take down the enemies before the other players. You're going to have hands of cards, you have different decks for the demons and for the knights, and what you're going to have is on your turn, you're going to have three cards in your hand, the characters, each character is going to have three cards in the hand, as well as the basic card. The basic card gives you three basic options, a heal, a magic, and or a move. Now magic has to be used in com combination with other magic symbols, so it's not going to help you on its own, but it could be combined with a card to give you access to your magical abilities in the game. Over here past that, you're going to have cards like this, which are slightly stronger cards. This will give you two hearts or two ranged attacks, but every card can be used to use, well, every card except for your basic card can be used for any of the six basic actions. So for example, if I didn't want to do these, I could flip this over for its magic, combine it with this magic, and I'd have my magic ability. That's the way these cards work over here, just giving you access to those symbols. Then we have over here cards like this, which will give you either the magic symbols or the ability. Heal a close or just an ally one and deal one damage to all enemies close to the target. Close is in the square it is. You have these nine squares on the board. Close is anything within a square. Adjacent is adjacent to the square that you are in. And that's basically the way that's going to work. Then you have over here managing your armor. This will bump buff up your armor, which can be used to, both to protect yourself as well as to wander into a zone to be able to intercept and take damage for the elders to prevent them from dying because ultimately the demons get more points when they kill elders. So you're more concerned about their health than you are your own. And then again, an ability as well. On your turn, you're going to be playing your hand of cards, trying to use them either for the actual actions on the cards themselves, or alternately for the symbols in them, or worst case scenario, for a single solitary any symbol on the back. To that end, the basic symbols you have are melee attack, ranged attack, melee attack is in a close zone, ranged attack is in an adjacent zone, moving one zone, buffing up one armor, or alternately over here, getting uh, one health, a healing, and then using it for a magic item, and the minions have a similar, the demons have a similar system, instead of armor though, they don't actually have armor, past one demon that sort of has ice armor, but over here, you're going to instead have controlling various imps on the board. You see, the characters are also going to have, in addition to the various knights and demons we have over here, you can't see it that well, but we have two demons here, we have the knights over here, we have the various elders over here, and then we have the various imps over here, which at the end of every round, the imps are going to take activations. The imps are going to take two actions each, which generally are going to be moving and attacking for the most part. And then as well as that, the stone golems as well for the for the knights are going to do the same thing. And you're going to be spawning new mints and minions and stone golems 
every single round in addition to whatever your cards say as well. So you have that automatic spawning. Your goal throughout the game is to manage your hand of cards, to manage your abilities, to manage your character's abilities in the game better than your opponent's so that ultimately you can be the one left standing getting to the end over there. When a character dies over there that's going to be a point failure team, you're going to go into the deck of additional knights or additional demons, pick another one and continue from there. Not only really pick another one, get another one. And you're going to continue the, 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 the that, that continue fighting with your new characters, picking off wherever you left off and trying to get to the high, to, trying to get more points, get to the door over here before the other team does. That's the core idea of what's going on here. There's a few other aspects as far as the actual gameplay aspect, you know, rules that some of the locations have various abilities in them. You can ignore them if you want, but you should ideally use them just for first game or not ignore them. But ideally you should use them. Uh, you're going to have the various characters. All the characters have an ongoing ability and an activated ability as well that you want to be mindful of. The knights are going to have armor, like I said already, that they can be used to like, you know, to jump into a zone and take a hit for an elder to avoid that. You're going to have the spawning of the various enemies and then of various minions, as well as the fact that various knights and demons are going to spawn more things that you have to take care of and deal with how they're going to, uh, you know, bone crawlers or whatever, there's different, uh, there's more than that, it's bone crawlers, there's other spawned enemies you can use, minions you can use in the game, but ultimately you're trying to utilize your hands, your abilities, your characters, and the board state itself to try to get to your points before the other team does. The cooperative mode is the same basic idea, just instead of the demons activating in the cooperative mode, you can remove this demon deck entirely from the game, and instead just use these to activate the demons, and you'll use this hand to manage it yourself, and again you can play it solo, controlling at least two characters, or just full on cooperative, just controlling the actual characters themselves, making sure you have a demon for every knight in the game. And then lastly, like I said already, the story and or the story and campaign mode of the game. And that is basically what you have as far as going on in Nightfall. A lot of things, because there's three different modes, a lot of different ways to play, competitive, head-to-head, -head, a cooperative, solo, story, campaign, all those things. But with that, let's start off with ease of play. And I'll say that ease of play is a lot only because there's so much going on. This is not that hard a game to go through. The rulebook is not the shortest. That's because it needs to teach you the game structure. It needs to teach you the actual, you know, every change to the structure based on what player count or uh, based on what the, what mode you're playing in as well. But the actual gameplay sequence for the most part is you have a hand of three cards, the basic card that you always get back, and then three cards from your deck. You play those cards to do what's on those cards, and then from there you just need to know the basic structure of what it means to move. Move is, you know, orthogonally and not diagonal. What it means to do a ranged attack. What's close? What's adjacent? For the most part, the abilities are fairly intuitive as far as what they do. You read the text, you do what the ability says this is about managing your hand managing your abilities and managing your characters but it's not the most complicated to uh to get going as far as how long the game is that's a complicated depends very heavily on player count and the mode you're playing it it can range drastically between being on the low end i'd say a 45 minute game on the longer end it could be much longer than that and that's before we even talk about obviously the campaign story mode as well as far as what i like don't like and can see others not liking there's a bunch of things going on here First of all, the production value is, is gorgeous in general. The art in general, this is art, I believe, by Andrew Bosley and by uh, Ryan Lockett, if I'm not mistaken. Illustrations by Ryan Lockett and Andrew Bosley. Yep, so we have both those over here. Uh, the general production, even this thing as simple as these over here, each of these characters having their own art. I have a lot of them in the box as well, so I didn't even pull everything out. But everything just looks beautiful. I mean, it's mostly cards, a few tokens, these clips over here. But the presentation looks great on the table. It's a beautiful production value offhand. It pulls you into the world. Uh, these tiles are double-sided for the sake of usually going to be playing with these sides, but when you play through story mode, you'll have other tiles that are more uh, scenario-based, representing the fact that you're not always in the temple fighting the demons. Additionally, the game has powers and abilities. A lot of powers and abilities, like giant stacks full of powers and abilities. You have your actual character with their intrinsic ability and then their activated ability, but you also have the entire deck for your team that's going to drive how your team operates, and you'll have cards that are right or wrong for any given moment. Being able to kill a bunch of minions that happen to be in your spot, being able to ricochet a lightning bolt, you know, cha cha channeling around from enemy to enemy in the game. Every single card is going to have its pros and cons of when it's helpful for its ability, when you want to use it for the listed icons, or when you just need to follow back and use it for the default icons, but there's a lot of text and powers and abilities in the game to go through, both as the knights and as the demons, and on the abilities and just everything. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun things happening in this game because of the nature of the extensive amount of card play going on. The hand management to that end is intrinsic of trying to figure out what and when to what what, when and where to use it as you go through the experience is a big part of trying to outlast the other team. You're both going to be it's a war of attrition. You're going to be gaining points. Both sides are going to be gaining points. You cannot protect every elder 
nor can you stop the rounds from ending. Points are going to be moving along, both sides gaining them as you go through it, but it's how you find those edges and how you utilize the cards in your hand and where you choose to take down a few minions versus take down that demon versus protecting an elder. Those are going to be the decisions that make or break how you go through the experience. Additionally, the campaign is accessible and decent enough to explore. The campaign is not overbearing. It's not like a, a long campaign that's going to take you several weeks. You can play the campaign over the course of a few days easily, possibly even a single day if you're really powering through things and just trying to get it all knocked out. But the campaign is accessible, giving you a bunch of, uh, you know, small fights to go through, a final climactic fight, but not overly long. There's a degree of exploration, degree of choose and adventure, a few encounters, and then a final fight. Overall, it's a very accessible campaign and decent enough to explore as far as, you know, wandering around the village, uh, interacting with the characters, choosing what to do when you find different things, things like that as you go through the experience. As far as what I don't like in the game, first of all, I'll say that mechanically speaking, story-wise, story, story -wise, like the campaign aspect, there's more to explore in the cooperative mode that you won't have in the competitive mode, but past that, I'll say mechanically speaking, dealing with the enemy deck, I just felt less rewarding than playing this head-to-head. -head. I think playing this head-to-head -head is a lot more agency choice and back and forth that felt like a more rewarding experience. I felt that the cooperative, uh, the cooperative and or solo mode, I felt that this deck of cards was just less fun. It felt less fun to not just obviously, you know, the lack of the demons having their agency, but just as the knights, it didn't feel as as impactful, I guess. It felt more procedural and not as rewarding. I did not enjoy the cooperative experience as much in terms of the mechanics. I liked the story that it added, I liked the exploration it added, but pure mechanically speaking, I felt it took away from the from how good the skirmish elements of the game are and the head-to-head -head battling of the game. Additionally, I'll say that playing a card for its symbol is a fairly lame experience. Sometimes you have to do it, sometimes it is what it is, but when you have a, a, a card in your hand that could be really useful, maybe maybe it's more heals or a ranged attack, but the situation on the board just doesn't let you take advantage of that, sometimes you just have to use it for its other side, which is not particularly satisfying. I'm glad that it gives you that, but the nature of the game means you're not really working with character decks. You're not really working with the degree of being able to hold onto your hand properly and being able to really engage in hand management. Rather, you have a hand of cards, you're going to use your hand of cards, then you're going to drop a new hand of cards, and that means that you don't have as much agency over the long course of when a card is good for you or how much uh, how much decision there is around what when uh, just most of your actions i would say feel a decent amount of your actions feel almost scripted by your hand and powers you have limited agency on what's actually in your hand you have limited decision space of how you can utilize that there are decisions to be made a hundred percent there is i mentioned this is a war of attrition and it's up to you to fine tune where where you find those pathways forward but while there are decisions to be made other times the obvious decision is going to be play that card so you can go ahead and move closer then play this card so you can deal two damage to both demons there's going to be a lot of of pre-scripted decisions happening because of the nature of the board state and what you have in your hand and you'll have decisions on the edges but not on every single thing in the game as far as i can see others not like in the game first of all the luck of the draw and the hand management uh, for me it's less of a concern of you know the luck of the draw i didn't mind that aspect i felt that over the course of the game it balanced out for me it's more about the lack of agency in many of the uh, board states at any point in time but i'd say that in general you might have a problem with the fact that there is luck of the draw in hand management there's times where you draw that card which is going to destroy every minion in your space and it happens to be you have three imps in your space right now and that is going to be the difference between how you can move forward in the game you will have those moments uh, over the course of the game i think the even a decent amount of the time, but a decent amount of the time is not all the time. You will certainly have better and better and worse hands, not in and of themselves, but for the situation on the board. Additionally, like I mentioned already, you have an attrition-based game going on here. Both sides are going to gain points. You're ultimately going to be moving forward towards that end. There's no way to stop it, which for me is a good thing. It keeps the, the game on a leash and it makes sure it doesn't you know, run away for, as far as how, how long the game experience is. But you can't stop people here. You can just slow them down and or try to accelerate past them on your end as much as possible. Ultimately, you're both heading towards that end game and who gets there first is going to, well, be the winner, obviously. As far as final thoughts on Nightfall, I overall enjoyed the game and there's a lot of good things to say about Nightfall. I'll also say that it's a game that almost falls under the umbrella of Jack of All Trades, Master of None. I think Nightfall is doing too many things. I think it's doing too many things as far as trying to be a good head-to-head -head game, a good cooperative game, a good solo game, a good campaign game, and I don't think it achieves it on all of those things. I think the best mode, personally, to me, is the head-to-head the head -head game experience, where you're facing off a 1 versus 1, 2 versus 2, 3 versus 3, all that. I think that's going to give you the best experience as far as the shining a light on the best mechanical uses of the game, and I almost wish they had put less time into the solo cooperative all those things and instead rounded out the competitive even further as it stands to me nightfall is an enjoyable experience i like the gameplay but because of that kind of diverse aspects of where the game's trying to do things it doesn't necessarily shine it's it's a good game it's fun to go through that head versus head mode is enjoyable to go through as being a good skirmish game with powers and abilities and a lot of fun to go through but 
uh, yeah, it's a good it's a good game with elements and modes that I think didn't necessarily shine as much. For me, overall, it's a 3.5 out of 5, and I would recommend the head-to-head -head as being the best experience, with the other experiences being totally fine, but not necessarily where I think the game shines. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, I'll give Now or Never. If you're looking for another game in the Red Raven universe over here, Now or Never I think is a fantastic game experience that does a lot of the things this game does, but to me does them better. It has a better story, better campaign, better better, a better solo shot. Overall, it's a, it's a very good, very intricate system, very different in the mechanical execution, but I think if you're looking for something that in the, in the Red Raven universe that feels adjacent, but overall better, I'd highly recommend Now or Never. And if you're looking for a different game that gives you head-to-head, co-op, co solo, one-shot, all of those things, but in a much more intricate system, a whole lot more both in terms of cost and mental overhead to manage, but if you're willing to go down that rabbit hole, Teneris Adventures is a game that's going to give you all of that in a very, very large box. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.